Hmm. Okay, let's see. And I wish you all an amazing day. All right, finally. My script is finally done. It took long enough. I think I'm going to relax with a nice book for a nice break. Now, what do I want to read? Hmm. I have read those for in a while. Hmm. Those are pretty good too. Oh. I'll save you for later, for a special occasion. Hmm, psychology books, I've read those for a long time. Hmm, what else? Sherlock Holmes books, haven't read those in a while. Ooh, Arsene Lupin, don't mind if I... What's that? Oh no. Oh no. What is this? Oh no, oh no, oh. Oh, it's just the chess merchants threatening me again. Oh, I haven't had that one in a while. For a second, I thought it was something much worse. Well, now, this video aged as well as Jonah's popularity. Hello everyone, remember me? It's okay if you don't. My upload schedule's existence entered limbo ages ago. So a couple of months ago, I mentioned that I would be making a very special video for 1,000 subscribers. And now I am pretty much making that video for almost 1,800 subscribers. And I am still trying to figure out where all those 800 people came from. I tried a number of things, such as exploring specific perks, killer archetypes, or even looking at certain other things. But they ended up being major time sinks, and I was not interested in wasting any more time. Unless, of course, you would be interested in seeing that kind of stuff. That being said, this video ends up being rather weird, since it is something that I've always had nagging at me in the back of my head, and that is the series why no one uses. I found out that my justifications for what is considered for why no one uses to be, well, all over the place, so I decided to readjust the rules and this video is the perfect way to show what I want to do for the future. The rules will be easy to understand. If a character has two perks and they have a 2% or lower pick rate, the last perk is 4% or lower, then they are considered for why no one uses. That being said, if I ever were to make a why everyone uses, two perks need to be 8% or higher, and the last perk can be 6% or higher. So what happens then for the weird situations that perks don't meet these expectations? Well, that is what this series is for. In the new series, The Bizarre Case, I look at the perks in the middle, or who do not meet the requirements for the other two series, and include them here. This allows me to look at all of the characters all over again, as many of the perks since I started Why No One Uses have been changed, and many new characters have shifted the popularity of certain perks. This series also helps me to look at the characters in particular, as I don't actually look at them very often, mostly because balance can be rather tricky for killers compared to perks. Regardless, I feel a perfect character to introduce this rather odd series would be Zarina. Not only to finally update this age-old video, but also because I think she is neat. So for a little bit of history, Zarina came out on March 10th, 2020. Oh, what an interesting year. And her popularity has been rather consistent. She was well liked at the time, and then Map and Killer, although having their own issues, were overall beloved. Considering her name, which means Golden Hope, her lore and design were early indications of how behavior were trying to reshape the survivors, from stereotypes to actually interesting people. Yet, for some weird reason, behavior were rather slow on releasing cosmetics for Zarina. I suspect this had to do with the fact that although she was well received, she was not Feng or Vittorio well received. However, she was not punished as mean as other unpopular characters, as she has received a decent amount of options throughout the years. That being said, her popularity seems to have risen in recent times. This might have to do with a certain buff to a particular perk, but who knows, maybe it's just because she got a haircut or something. I also have to admit that Zarina was my first main, before Cheryl and Hattie, as she had a story and design that I found rather interesting, and I still cannot help but enjoy. That being said, if Behavior were to expand on her lore one day, you know, during a blue moon and solar eclipse at the same time, I honestly cannot wait to see what they try out. Now enough talking about the character, let's finally get into discussing her three teachable perks. 
Her perks are honestly a whiplash when it comes to popularity, as two of her perks struggle to even break past 1% pick rate, and then she has one that has skyrocketed to 8%, but we'll talk about that one later. Let's first start with the lowest and crawl all the way to the top. I'm singing some and spending all day jamming. I'm the singing some and spending all day jamming. I'm the singing some and spending all day jamming. Why doesn't he just leave? I suspect if you were to ask anyone about the usefulness of red herring, many would say it is as useful as a singing fish toy. Cute on the first few uses, but rather pointless. Red herring activates after working on a generator for 3 seconds, marking its aura in yellow. This aura lasts until the generator is completed, or if you interact with a new gen and that one is marked, or if the perk goes on cooldown. Once entering a locker, a loud sound notification is played to the killer, and then the perk goes on a 40 second cooldown. That's a lot of words to say that the perk does nothing. Okay, to be fair, the perk was never designed around being meta relevant, as the day this thing becomes meta is when corrective action becomes a 3 gen counter. It is because of this weird design that instead of looking at the perk like I normally do, I need to take a different approach when exploring the perk's faults, along with how to improve it. So let's first start with general issues, that being the sluggishness of the perk itself. You need to work on a generator for 3 seconds, then you need to run to a locker and hop into it, and only once you are fully inside the perk finally triggers and slaps you in the face with a lengthy cooldown. That would be like Blood Echo, but instead of the survivor needing to be injured, you need to solve the mysteries of life itself for it to trigger. Regardless, the perk literally has two restrictions and then a timer for just making a noise. Meanwhile, Pebble needs you to be in the terror radius for a bit and boom, you can now throw a Pebble, congratulations. The perk is clearly trying to be as silly as the dreaded Pebble, but because of how slow and clunky it feels, the perk just does not feel enjoyable to run. Oh, and then there's the worrisome cooldown of 40 seconds, because clearly the ability to create a sound effect is so powerful to warrant that. The only reason I suspect Behavior wanted the cooldown was to reduce noise spam from the perk. But let's be honest, it's the survivor player base we're talking about. They constantly collect their flashlights and jump in and out of lockers in a fit if they don't face a Wesker or Bubba for the 48th time. The second problem the perk faces is like any bad joke, it gets old fast. Diversion is a beloved meme in the community, not only because thinking a threatening monster getting fooled by a pebble is funny, but also because the way Diversion works makes it feel believable. The perk leaves scratch marks. There's a sound cue, and if you aim it well enough, the killer might suspect you fast vaulted a locker or window, but Red Herring in comparison only triggers on gens, and that begins to limit the amount of meme potential it has. If the killer is fooled by Diversion and they realize it, they not only feel dumb for being fooled by it, but they also can't help but laugh about it. In the case of Red Herring, they just think a gen lost some progress and continue on with their lives. It's likely that in lower MMR, killers can get fooled by Red Herring, but let's be honest, they can get fooled by many things, so it's not really an accomplishment. If the killer is busy looking for someone, however, yeah, the perk still does not help. It is very likely the killer will hear that the gen has way too little progress, and in between going to that gen, they most likely will find someone. The last issue more so has to deal with how well the perk can be placed into the player's builds. In most cases, survivors enjoy having dedicated meme builds that make the best use of all the options they got. A great example is Deception, a perk belonging to Elodie. This perk allows you to fake entering a locker and then hides your pools of blood and scratch marks for 3 seconds, and then goes on a cooldown for 40 seconds. The perk tends to be run in locker theme builds, such as Quick and Quiet and Head On, and it can cause a decent amount of confusion for the killer player when they don't expect it. Red Herring, on the other hand, does not have many combo pieces. The best one that comes to mind would be Blast Mine, but this combo piece is rather clunky. Especially if you're on a map that is allergic to lockers, or you are facing an Iron Maiden player. Then there is also Dredge, but I tend to leave him alone in his comfy locker spot and call it there. Granted, in the case of Diversion, the perk can be run by itself, but even so, it is comboed with other stealth perks that allow you to slip away. So what can be said about this dead fish? Outside of the problems that I mentioned with its clunky nature, its rather dull meme potential, and the weak build path that it goes towards, we are just left with a perk that honestly does not feel that fulfilling to run. Sometimes a perk that feels like it does something is far greater than a perk that ends up feeling hollow. So how can we save this poor fish before it begins to smell more than it currently does? 
Realistically, the perk needs a major tune-up to solve all of its problems, but considering it is supposed to be a meme, let's just focus on trying to make it more funny than how it currently is. The first buff option is very simple. Rework the perk to allow you to trigger the sound from pressing the secondary ability button, and while we're at it, let's reduce the cooldown to 20 seconds too. This just makes the perk feel more faster in nature, as you can trigger it whenever you want, and the cooldown is not as punishing as it is right now. Does it solve all of its flaws? Not really, but it does make the meme it's trying to make more interesting. Before getting to the second buff idea, I need to make a quick mention to Mint Skull and his rework concept for Red Herring. I overall find the idea interesting, and it could be an amazing addition to the game, as I personally have always found giving the survivors more tools to cause confusion to be cool. That being said, Red Herring should focus on something else, as the idea of a recorder playing Grunts of Pain sounds like something Trickster would be interested in, and I want to stay far away from that creature. Plus, I tend to focus on creating my own ideas for perk balancing, but I feel obligated to talk about this change, since it was overall a cute idea. The second buff option gives the perk a nasty surprise for the killer, if they do end up going to the generator. After working on the generator for 5 seconds, you can press the active ability button to activate Red Herring. This causes the generator to play repair audio and every 5 seconds causes a loud sound notification to be sent to the killer. This effect persists for 30 seconds or until the killer damages the generator from the damaging action, along with highlighting their aura for 5 seconds. The perk then goes on a 30 second cooldown once the perk effect ends. This is very much a supercharged version of current Red Herring, combining the elements of the first buff idea and Mint Skull's idea. The perk is designed around leading the killer to the gen, so why not make them think someone is repairing the gen? The perk also helps to show you that it got value from its aura read, and helps it combo nicely with perks such as Blast Mine. Overall, the idea of distraction perks are… interesting. I have always found them to be a cute way for survivors to play differently from the typical gameplay loop that has dominated in recent times, and it gives a nice break when you just want to have fun. If you ever, for some reason, consider playing with Red Herring, here's a build that I personally use. I would like to give a second build option, but people don't feel like bending their brains for the fish, as attempting build variety for this perk is very tricky. Let's hope that one day behavior look back at the fish as it is beginning to smell. Wait, are you crying? Yes. Thank you for acknowledging my feelings. Thank you for acknowledging mine. We're both great at this! <laughs> when it comes to the series why no one uses, I have always been very careful with what character's perks I want to talk about, because there may be situations where the perk is honestly just not strong enough because of numbers or perk design, but then we get to situations like this one. For the People is a good perk. One that bounces around when it comes to popularity, but it tends to stay in the lower levels of pick rate. The perk's ability is active while you are healthy, and when you are healing a survivor, you can press the active ability button to place yourself into the injured state, while trading the health state to the teammate. Along with this, you are given the broken stats effect for 60 seconds and become the obsession. This was a perk that many found to be interesting in concept, and it has been used in swift groups because of how well they can remove problems from the perk. Now normally, I would talk about the main issue with the perk, along with two possible options on how to buff it, but this is where things get… tricky. The perk itself is actually fine. In fact, it is better than fine, as it has improved greatly with the passage of time. New and updated perks have come to the game which help to solve any issues the perk currently suffers from. Empathy and empathic knowledge help to show where the survivor is along with showing them where to go. Made for this helps to give you the mobility to get away, and with the rework buckle up and we're gonna live forever, the perk has become much stronger at prolonging the chase. The perk has opened up in its uses, turning from a simple anti-tunneling tool into a chase extender if used with other perks. It is because of all of these new and updated perks that For the People has aged much better compared to other perks in the game, and it is why I am reluctant to recommend changes. The perk's issues are more so ways to counteract its power, since being able to trade a health state is honestly insane amounts of value and any more changes for the perk would lead it to made for this levels of stupidity. If I had to make any points as to why players are not running it more, it has to do with its difficulty, as there are many factors that need to happen to get value. 
But as I said, these issues are solved through the use of other supportive perks that help locate teammates. Perks that help keep teammates safe after using the perk, and other perks to keep yourself safe after using for the people. The other issue to mention is that sometimes you just cannot reset to get for the people, because of healing slowdown perks or specific killers such as Plague and Nurse, who constantly apply pressure. But there are roundabouts to these problems, and you either never see the killers who cause you issues, or it's Nurse and the game ends before you are finished loading into the match. Here is a dedicated for the people build, which includes made for this and empathy for a solo queue experience, but they can easily be swapped out for whatever, depending on if you are playing with friends or not. And this is a build I personally enjoy using for the people in, since it can be a useful plan B when the speed perks don't work out. But in the swift it can get better. It honestly is great to see that for the people has aged as well as it has. The perk itself was decent, but with the new support tools added to the game, it now has a chance to have a dedicated build focused around it. It does suck that not more players run the perk, but this is dead by day like we are talking about, and most players only use 4 perks, replacing one for their variety of the day. I still disagree with giving it a buff, mostly because it can lead to the perk becoming tier 0, but with more perks coming to the game, I suspect there will be a perk in the future that pushes for the people into being even stronger than it is right now. I... I thought you were dead. My death was... greatly exaggerated. So, you're the punk I've heard about. <laughs> now we get to what you've all been waiting for. That being the ever-beloved Off the Record, which was the first ever perk to start why no one uses. Which makes it even more ironic, when realizing it's probably one of the best perks in the game. If you are interested in learning about what Off the Record did back then, I recommend watching that video, as the points I made back then still stand with how it functioned, along with you being able to see my incompetence for perk balancing. 20 seconds of no scratch marks or blood. What was I thinking back then? Off the Record triggers after being unhooked, and for the next 80 seconds, you not only have no grunts of pain, you also hide your aura from aura reading effects. Additionally, you are granted 80 seconds of endurance, which turns off if you perform a conspicuous action, and the perk disables once the last generator is powered. Conspicuous actions are actions that progress the match in some way, such as totem interaction, gen repair, healing, and even sabotaging. So I'm sorry, Jake Mains, but this perk won't work in your cool new Sabo tech builds. Instead, the perk has a very clear direction of what it wants to do, and that is anti-tunnel. Before, it struggled to get any value, since if the killer ran back to the hook to down the survivor again, aura hiding and mute grunts of pain effects would not really help much. Now, however, the perk does a much better job at allowing the survivor to get away once the killer returns, since they have a second chance to survive. Now that we have looked at how the perk has gotten better, let's look at how it is now elevated to why everyone uses status. The first thing to note about the perk is that it currently provides a good solution to a very popular playstyle, which I've already said was tunneling. Tunneling is a playstyle where the killer returns to the unhooked survivor and are relentless to put them back onto the hook and kick them out of the match. This is normally done to apply mass pressure, since a 3v1 is much easier to control as killer compared to 4v1, however, off the record helps to counter this thought process. Since the survivor has such a long period of time of immunity to a hit, the killer needs to waste even more time in order to get the down. And that is the key point. Time. Off the record helps greatly as being a pressure tool to waste killer's time who want to tunnel, and even when the killer does not want to tunnel, the perk can be turned into an aggressive tool. A survivor can find a teammate to heal them and then run to tank two hits on another teammate. And since they have so much time from off the record, they can be sure to at least keep that teammate safe. This is a strategy that is normally utilized by Swifts, considering the amount of communication necessary to know what is needed to keep everyone safe, but it is an important point to mention. The second reason for off the record's popularity has to do with how splashable the perk is. Splashability is an important topic for perks, since it is one of the big reasons why certain perks are very popular. Splash ability is a simple term, which means how easy a perk is able to be integrated into any build. If we were to compare this with another perk, Power Struggle would be a great example of being a perk that is not very splashable. 
Power Struggle activates only once you reach 15% of the Wiggle Bar while being carried by the killer. And once you are under a pallet, you can drop it stunning them. Unlike Off the Record, which can be run in any build for players who have room for an anti-tunnel tool, Power Struggle needs a dedicated build to eliminate most of its flaws, such as reaching the 15% wiggle requirement with Flip Flop, or the use of Tenacity to get far enough under the pallet to secure the stun. Off the Record, on the other hand, does not need a dedicated build, since it is strong enough to stand on its own, but it can be a nice combo piece for other perks. It is the simple fact that you can make any build and just toss this perk into the mix, and it doesn't interfere with the build, which makes it so good. The final point to mention about Off the Record is a reverse of a problem I mentioned in that old Why No One Uses video, that being alternatives. Back in the day, there were better stealth options, more specifically Iron Will, which actually granted 100% reduction to Grunts of Pain compared to its current 75% that also now turns off while you are exhausted. Along with this, Decisive Strike has been kicked off of its throne since the stun duration is now 3 seconds rather than 5. Off the record now is in the unique state, where the alternatives are not that great, and it does make sense, considering you need to trade a hook state for its effect, compared to Iron Will, which just gave you free stuff for being injured, which feels awfully familiar. Regardless, the alternatives are now weaker, allowing the perk to stand stronger as a fun option for stealth play, but it is mostly because of its anti-tunnel identity that allows it to stand strong, since the other anti-tunnel perks are unable to keep up. Although it is important to note that Decisive Strike is paired with Off the Record sometimes, but it is not the most common combo piece. So now that we have looked at why the perk is so popular, here comes the one million dollar question. Does, does the does perk need, need a nerf? nerf? Well, the answer is rather tricky. Oh, there it is again. The problem right now is that tunneling is just way too prevalent, and considering the alternatives are not strong enough to be run separately, and at times are comboed with off the record, there needs to be more wider adjustments, whether it be with the game and how tunneling is dealt with, or with perks that help to counteract it. However, this is a much larger issue that requires a lot more thinking, and sadly, this video is already long enough that we do not need to expand on that dilemma. So into the work folder with you. No, instead what I want to tackle is the aggressive nature of Off the Record, as many players have found ways to make this a much more mean tool as at defending their teammates, even though the perk is normally supposed to be selfish in nature. So the two nerfs I plan on doing are just to reduce its aggressive design. The first is a simple nerf. Reduce the duration of Off the Record's effects by 20 seconds, making it last for 60 seconds total. As I said, the perk has found its place within Swifts, especially in teams who can coordinate to heal and tank two hits on another teammate, not only allowing them to escape, but also being a massive time waste for the killer, since now they are forced into having to down the target, and this can lead into other things to happen. The reduced time now just makes this planned action harder to accomplish, and does not step on the toes of the perk being an anti-tunnel perk, considering a full minute of endurance is still pretty nice. The second nerf follows in a similar fashion, attempting to reduce the power of Off the Record's flexibility. The perk is shut down from only two things currently, that being when the last gen is powered, or when the survivor does any conspicuous action. The latter part however only shuts down the endurance part of Off the Record, and the aura reading, denial, and grunts of pain removal remain intact. I appreciate that Behavior want to keep those parts with the perk, even after its buff, However, these staying up end up causing more pain on the killer side than most would suspect. In particular, the grunts of pain are a clear indication for many players to know someone is running off the record, and if the killer doesn't want to tunnel, then they will just leave them alone. However, even after they leave that target for someone else, if they bump into the off the record survivor, they can't tell if the person still has endurance, or if they have done anything during that time. And as I said with the Swifts and their current plans of double body blocks with the 80 seconds of endurance, I believe turning these parts of the perk off along with the endurance gives good information for the killer to know when they are safe to chase after the other target, along with knowing when someone is trying to go for a double body block. Here's a generic build that puts off the record to its fullest use, and I would give a second build here. But the perk is so splashable that you can run it with anything, so go crazy with your no myth or self-care builds. As long as you got off the record, your build is almost tier 0. 
How do I even end this video? Serena's perks are similar to Ping Pong. On one hand, she has probably one of the strongest perks in the game with Off the Record, yet at the same time has one of the weirdest with Red Herring. And then there's For the People, which I find is one perk away from being meta-shaking. On the rainy day during the blue moon that Behavior were to look at Zarina's perks again, I would greatly appreciate them looking at Red Herring first, as I think it has a chance to be fun to run, but it is just too clunky to be more enjoyable. With the how Behavior had been handling perk balance, however, I suspect that we are in good hands, just as long as they keep the person who made made for this as far away as humanly possible. But what do you all think? Do you think I am finally reaching my breaking point and my decisions are insane? Or do you agree? I'm sure there will be fun comments on this one, so I can't wait to read what you think of this new series. So good luck in your games, everyone! You will need it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Sorry it took so long, but life was keeping me busy, and YouTube was biting away at my time while I was attempting to become fully verified and all that. I honestly have no idea how well the series will do, considering I normally talk about why no one uses certain perks, but I felt that the rules needed to be updated, especially considering it was already rather odd on how I classified certain perks as why no one used it very often. So hopefully this will help to balance things out. Also, I'm not done with why no one uses, but I wanted to try something new out with the ruling changes, and that is how we got here. Thanks again for watching and almost 1,800 subscribers. I was not expecting that amount of growth so soon, so that was really nice to see. So if you want to see more, like the video, subscribe, eat some bread, keep your doors locked since Michaela has broken out again, you know, all the typical YouTube things. So once again, thank you all for the support and being patient with me, especially with how wacky my release schedule has been. And I wish you all an amazing day.